Welcome back to another episode of Spotlight on the Arts, an independently produced show sponsored in part by the Chicopee Cultural Council and Chicopee TV. My name is Johnny Miranda, your host for the evening, and today we have an amazing show. We're going to meet alternative house DJ, DJ Ananas, also known as Justin, and we will learn about his music and how he's inspiring the world through it. Tune in up next. And here we are with Justin Leaphart, also known as DJ Ananas. Justin, thank you for being in our show. Thank you for How having me. How are you me. today? I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm doing good, and I'm very excited to have you in the show. Um, Justin, for those who don't know, was the DJ that was entertaining <laughs> and keeping the crowd up during the Pride Festival here in Chicopee. And he gave us some great music. Uh, people were dancing <laughs> and enjoying themselves. And Justin, tell us about the type of music, alternative music, yeah. right, that you play, that, that, that you like playing. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, so I identify as an alternative house DJ, um, and why I put the word alternative in it, it's because house music can get like really repetitive. So I like to pull different like um, elements from different genres and like mix it all in um, by separating the track. So like a lot of influence I have come from like artists like um, Amy Winehouse, for example. I love older music like A Tribe Called Quest, Wu Tang Clan, and everything like that. Um, and I like to like take elements of that and then add it onto a danceable track and then move throughout the event. So yeah, nice. Good old time. And what what is that creative process <laughs> like when you're um? How do you decide what song you're going to choose to mix and, and, and to put out in a, in a show? Or how do you choose the music and how, what makes, you know, what's the creative process of mixing like? Yeah, um, so the first part comes down to music theory. So I have to make sure everything's in the same key for starters, um, because if they're in a different key, it's going to sound super wonky. Um, and then from there, I can adjust everything within my program of like the BPM. But before that, um, the research that goes into it's like very, very in depth. Like I just listen to a ridiculous amount of music, um, and I base things. Like if I find a specific sound, I'll take an audio clip of that and look up similar things based off of that audio clip, um, and then just expand like into a rabbit hole of like 30 songs, and then from there with the filtering of what's in the right key, then I can figure out what song I'm going to play. So a lot of trial and error, yeah. but a lot of front loading the work at the same time. But just, yeah, I, I, it's amazing how, like, in every form of artistry, there is that element of research. Like, if, if for example, you know, me as a visual artist, I'm going to work on a mural or something like that, there's a research that goes behind it, you know, the wall, the texture of the wall, what paint would go best. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making it in this community, <laughs> so I'm researching the community exactly. to see what is a good match, and that's exactly kind of the same in your field. Um, what are some of your favorite songs to play? Ooh, man, some of my favorite songs, I think for certain, like Be Your Girl, um, the Tidra Moses remix by Kei Trinata okay. is one of my personal favorites, 10% um, by Kei Trinata. Um, really love Kei Trinata, if you know who he is. He is a um, DJ and producer from British Columbia that makes amazing house music. Um, and I absolutely love it. Um, I love playing like edits from some of my favorite like artists, like my friend Tamei, who lives down in Miami. Um, she sends me music constantly. And then one of my absolute favorite songs to play is Dancing Queen by ABBA. Because nice. it can fit into so many different things. So, so. Nice, nice. I can, I can see that because we were talking about how it's important to find the key, I, I can see that you may have a few songs that you know mm -hmm. will fit in nicely uh, at, at any moment in a, in a song. Um, where have you been playing recently, aside Ooh. from Pride, <laughs> which you entertained us uh, last month uh, in June? So where, where have you been recently playing? Yeah, so I spend most of my time DJing in Boston um, in places like Fenway Johnny's, The Greatest Bar, um, Game On, um, and just like throughout parts of like the North End. 
Um, and then also a little bit closer to home, like in Springfield, I DJ at Dewey's very often. Nice. Um, in which I do like a lot of brunches and the R&B nights. Um, and then also down in Connecticut at Foxwoods. Um, and then when I'm not touring, like wherever that may bring me. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, I'd like try to, try to keep it as close to home as possible, yeah. but you know. So you're originally from Virginia. I am. And, and now you, you've been in Springfield since 2013? Yeah, yeah. So how, what made you, what made you do that transition <laughs> from Virginia to Springfield and why Springfield? Um, so I actually came up to Springfield for college and I went to American International College, AIC. Um, and I played rugby there, um, did four years, four and a half years actually, triple major, double minor, did an extra semester. What did you study? Um, <laughs> so, psychology, sociology, and education. Nice, double minor. you're in my field of yeah. social sciences. Good, and a good. Double minor in history and political science. Look at that. <laughs> so, that's, that that's me right there. Um, and then I left um, and I went back down to the DC area for a little bit and I came back for grad school. And then the pandemic happened, and I was like, all right, Springfield's home number two for a little bit. Nice, yeah. nice. And do you like Springfield? I do like Springfield. It's yeah. a pretty solid place. I feel like a lot of people overlook it, yeah. but it like, has a lot of potential, and like, it's a pretty like, homey yeah. place and has a lot of culture to it. Yeah, and one, one thing that is very impressive is that the Western Mass region is very, very rich in artistic mentality and creation, and I, th I don't know why it's not more known for that, but uh, I guess it's because I am immersed in the field of, mm -hmm. of the art world, so I, there's so much people around mm -hmm. that is very artistic, but I think that this is a very artistic region, and you can see that with like the murals that are going up, all the DJs that are around, comedians, actors. Uh, we recently had one of our guests who, who is actually in a, in a in a Netflix series, you know? So it's, uh, so definitely this region has a lot of potential and I can see why maybe that kind of intrigued yeah. you and attracted you to the region. Um, so just yesterday you <laughs> published yeah. uh, an edit that you did of a song. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, so I do this thing um, which is called musical curation where I take pieces of media and I'll take their soundtracks and strip them down and make like different versions of them. So it's like more of a narrative piece, but also try to mix it back into being danceable. So I chose Self Love from the Spider-Man um, soundtrack with Coil Array and Metro Boomin. Um, and I stripped it down and put like some drums on it to make it more danceable. So it kind of sounds like work by Rihanna, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like a pretty good time. Nice. Yeah. And when you create your content, your music, do you normally uh, load it up on Spotify, wh yeah. what, what <laughs> platforms do you upload your music um, to? So depending on what it is, so my curated mixes, a lot of those are on like Spotify, Apple Music, um, but everything literally can just be found if you like search up DJ Anonymous on Google. Right. Um, but then like my edits specifically, I sell those on Bandcamp. Um, so I do like a name your price type of thing because like a lot of DJs always ask me to like send them edits, but I'm really bad at answering emails. So right. I'm like, please just buy it <laughs> and I'll send it to you immediately. Right. Um, but it's like very accessible all over the internet. Nice, nice. One thing that is, um, that, that a lot of uh, people don't seem to, to understand or are not familiar with is that for us artists, there is a different side of our enterprise that mm -hmm. we need to take care of that isn't necessarily artistic and or not related to the art that we create but we need to learn how to be marketers we need to yeah. be <laughs> networkers we need to be our own administrative workers replying to our own stuff and making calls and all of that it's a one-man operation it kind is. of so how is that experience for you how do you market yourself what what areas do you find that are best for you to do marketing for your music? Is it just word of mouth or yeah, how does that um, work for you? So luckily I have a marketing <laughs> background, so that's like been my saving grace. Um, but I've learned that like constantly posting on social media, like holding conversations, answering emails back and forth is a lot for one person. Um, so I try to like sometimes expand it out to other people or I just do it at my own pace. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that I've learned is that I don't need to rush it because right. quantity is not as important, but quality is gonna right. like stand the test of time. Right, and, and, and I guess that 
uh, when people listen to your music, your music proves that. Yeah. Like, you know, this is quality. And I mean, I can, I can attest to that because <laughs> of, of, of how wonderful the music was in, um, in the Pride Fest. Um, how do you uh, get a sense or a feel for the crowd when you are performing? How do you <laughs> know this is what they want? Because I've always seen the work of a DJ as like, the DJ can make you sit or the DJ can make you jump mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have that control. Like if you want the crowd to go crazy, you have the control to do that with, yeah. with sound. So how, do you, how is that interaction with the audience as you're performing? Um, I think that interaction is like something I've learned like over time. Like I'm not a big person that talks on the mic, but I'm very observant of what's going on. So rather than looking at the person that's immediately having fun, like they came out to have fun, I'm looking for the person that's like kind of on the edge of like, oh, I don't know if I want to dance or if I want to go sit down. Because if I can get that person on the floor, then anyone who's like just sitting down might be more susceptible to getting up. And then it's about keeping those people happy. Right. And then once you keep those people happy, usually you have like this weird chemistry thing going on in the crowd. In between the stage, we're making eye contact, we're all doing the hand thing. And like from there, it's like just, it's up and trying to keep the momentum all the way through. Right. And hopefully no bad requests. So <laughs> that, let's talk about requests. I know that there are DJs that don't mind taking requests from the audience, but then there's DJs that feel that obtaining these requests is a bother. What's your posture on that? When they request music, is it like, oh my God, let me, I know what I'm doing. I'm playing what I'm playing. Or do you give in to like, what people are requesting, yeah. what's your approach? Um, so I like to go in to anything knowing I can't be the say all be all. Um, like if someone wants to hear a song that like is, like say a song's trending, and I'm like, all right, this song might be able to fit into what I'm doing, then I'll do it, but the thing is like, a bad request can kill the whole dance floor. Yeah. And yeah. no one's gonna look at the person who requested the music and be like, uh, you shouldn't have gave that request. I would look at the DJ and be like, why did you play that? So it's like really up to what the request is and then also using my headphones to listen beforehand and figure out how I'm gonna mix into it. But then if all else fails, how I'm gonna mix out of it quickly, so. Right, right. So. Yeah, and I think that it, um, when I was uh, watching you perform, uh, you made a comparison between you mixing with uh, like playing chess or something like that. Yeah. I, I think I recalled you <laughs> used like the description. It's like, like playing Tetris, that was, the, that was the, the game that you mentioned. It's like playing Tetris, trying to fit in these times and these tempos and mm -hmm. everything together. And uh, how? how, how do you, <laughs> how are you able to get all that at, because it's timing too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't make a mistake in a split second, could, potentially ruin that transition. Truly. Um, what is your best, what's your best approach knowing the songs prior? Man, it's a combination of one, knowing the songs prior, but also like, because visually you can see the sound waves and like songs are like structured a certain way. Um, but like the timing part, I will say, I think I have the luxury of being a musician that has been like extremely beneficial in the past. Um, so my timing's a little bit better than the average person. Um, but practice, like literally practicing. Okay. Okay. Um, and like not practicing specific transitions, but practicing certain principles that will carry through for like all types of music. Um, and like that's mixing and key, mixing, like dropping on the one, making sure that you don't start a song with vocals in the middle of a hook of another song right. and going from there. Great. So what, what of, if you had the opportunity to, to to talk to youth that might be interested in uh, creating content and performing and maybe giving DJing a try. Mm -hmm. how, would you, uh, how would you encourage them? What would you say to them uh, based on your experience in the field? I would say, one, know who you are and know that who you are is subjective to change. So like knowing your principles of being like, all right, this is the thing that I wanna do and this is like my authentic version of myself um, because putting out what's you rather than what is going to be like trending 
what trends is always going to change. Who you are is who you are constantly. Um, but then if anyone wants to get in like DJing specifically, it's like I always suggest find a specific genre of music that you like. Find some of your favorite artists and learn the principles of how they transition. And then find producers, find DJs that you like or like you've never even heard of. And then like not base your style off of that, but figure inspired, out what they're doing. Inspired, exactly, yeah. inspire and figure out what they're doing that makes them sound a specific way. Um, and then from there, like creativity will take over and creativity nice. is like endless. Right, so. right. <laughs> no limits to creativity. What is in the horizon for DJ Ananas? Where do you want to be? Uh, do you want to produce music for a recognized artist? Do you see yourself touring the world in Ibiza and all these <laughs> big uh, festivals? What's in the horizon for you? Um, I, yeah, it's a crazy question because it's like, there's so many different things I do outside of just DJing. So like I do produce, I do musical curation where I like take those pieces of media. But one thing I really want to aim towards is getting into like actual musical scoring. Um, and like sit down on like a TV show and be like, all right, this song's gonna be playing in the background of this scene, but it's gonna be echoed out this amount. Right. And then it's gonna gradually push itself in. Um, but then like on the sense of DJing, just like keep doing what I love and see how far it takes me. Um, because at the end of the day, life is very short. Um, and there's so many different things that can be done and that can't be done. And I just want to do all of the things. Nice. So, yeah. Well, I think that that is a very interesting field of like, you know, scoring music for, for TV shows and movies and series. That's amazing. See? So I can see possibly an Oscar in the horizon right. for best score, <laughs> DJ Ananas. Thank you. I'm putting it out there in the universe. You gotta, you gotta put it out there. Right. Um, so how can uh, our, our audience find you? What are your social media platforms? We'll put them right down on the lower yeah. third. Um, let's start with Instagram. So Instagram is I am DJ Anana. So DJ space A N A N A S. If you can't remember, bananas without the B. Nice. Um, also, if you speak any other languages, Ananas means pineapple. Um, nice. And then from there, where else? Um, if you just Google DJ Ananas, everything pops up: Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, um, literally all of the things. Um, and yeah. That's great. Well, audience out there, you know where to reach Mr. DJ Ananas. He <laughs> is an excellent DJ and as you can see, very creative and uh, his music will definitely have your event going. Uh, I, 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 I can attest to that. So DJ Ananas, I really, really appreciate you coming to our show. Thank you. I appreciate that you are putting out music, good music, out into the world and entertaining us. Um, and th that is one thing that I didn't ask and I'd like to know, where does the name DJ <laughs> Ananas come from and how yeah. did you choose that name? Um, so I played rugby in college and I was around a lot of Polynesian um, culture and a lot of Polynesian people. And I learned a lot about like, just like heritage things um, and pineapples represent like hospitality and royalty. Nice. Um, I don't really care for the royalty part because, like, no monarchies. But the hospitality. But the hospitality part. So, um, like, one of my favorite movies is Risky Business, and there's a scene where the main character's in his underwear and his socks, and he's, like, dancing um, because, like, no one's watching. He's, like, having the time of his life. Right. And I realized, like, going through college and starting as a DJ there, it was, like, people would only be super excited if they saw, like, a camera in their face. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, like, let's, like, get super hype about things. Um, and when I started making music, like generally for myself, I wanted to make music that would be like dance around in your house, like no one's watching music. But when we're all together, it's like no one's here to judge and like build a sense of community. So that's where DJ Nanas came from. Nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> and where are you going to be presenting in the coming months? Um, you know. I'm going to be at Foxwoods. I'll be at Shrine. Um, I'm excited about that. I'll be back down at the MGM. Um, in Springfield, um, Dewey's Jazz Lounge, and then a lot of stuff out in Boston, if anyone ever wants to come out to Boston. Well, you <laughs> are have, you, our audience has your social media information. Follow him on Facebook, follow him on all of the, his social media platforms so that you can stay in touch with his music and with him. And obviously, uh, they can follow you in any of your locations so they can have a good time and 
and be inspired by that, Thanks. you know? I think that one of the great things about uh, me experiencing your music was that at times you couldn't, uh, I couldn't control myself, right? <laughs> you couldn't just sit still. When you're listening to DJ Anana's music, your body is going to move alone, on its own. So I thank you once again for being in our show Spotlight on the Arts. Uh, I wish you the best. Thank I'm you. definitely going to continue following you and listening to your wonderful music. And I'm encouraging our audience to do the same. So thank you thank for you being for on the show. You. And you, our audience, this is Johnny Miranda. I will see you next time.